Hello, my crafty friends and creators from around the globe. Welcome to Heather and Jan's studio. And if you've been here before, welcome back. All right, I'm in the studio today. I've been playing, I've been experimenting, I've been trying some different things, but basically we're gonna work on our mermaid journal. Um, this is my flip-flop journal. So if you go back and watch the other videos, you'll get to this point. Um, which is now just some of the decorating, but I wanna prepare some pieces uh, before I do that. But this is where we are. And this is a free kit if you're new here. You can get it um, by checking the description box. It's either below or to the side, or if you're on a TV, I think you can swipe up or press the up button. You just wanna look for the more or see more and then open that up and that description will tell you how to get the free kit. So we put it together, cut everything out. I did, I don't know where you are. Um, I have all my ephemera over here, but we're gonna do some embossing. So I pulled out some pieces that I wanted to do some embossing on and some other experiments. But before I go there, let me just kind of bring you up to where I am and I'll kind of show you some of the stuff that I did, hold on. Okay, so I did nothing to you, you stay. No, you can stay over here, we'll, we'll put something on you. All right, so I did some embossing um, I have some clear embossing. Whoa, that was close. The cap wasn't on. <laughs> um, this is from Ranger. And so I did a bunch of these with clear. You can see it's got that watery look, which I think is just perfect for this kit. Um, these I did with one of these. Uh, one of the two of these. So these are also Distress Embossing Glazes. Um, this one is embossing powder. These are the glazes that Tim Holt has. I have a few of these. I don't have every color, but I happen to have colors that would work with the mermaids. So um, it's a very subtle difference because the glazes are very translucent. So you can see still some of the color differences through there even though I used a clear on the hair, but down here I definitely used, I'm, I'm gonna go with, it was this one. Maybe the hair I did the darker one. Anyway, and um, I'll show you that in a sec. So this was that circle with the water. I thought that looked really cool. Um, this one is the pearl, so that was a clear. This one I did with another, me and the caps, I'm gonna toss this. So this one is the antique linen. I use that for the starfish. So you can still see how you can see all the detail through there. I don't know where I am on the camera. I'm never showing it in the right place. Anyway, there you go. Um, and it, it's still, you can see all the detail because it's just a glaze. Um, this one is salvaged patina and this one is broken china. I also have this one here, which is speckled egg. I haven't used this one yet. So, and then I tried these frosting crystals. These are not translucent. So um, they sit more on top if you're looking for something like that. And then I just had some other ones out that I brought up because, uh, brought down rather, they were in my um, upstairs stash. Uh, this ancient gold was kind of cool. I put that on this dolphin first, and then I went over it with some clear, and that kind of brought this to life. This, I went with, where is it? So this an Antiquities, I did here, and I don't think I've used this recently. This is a pretty old one, but you see how it's not translucent, so that was a fail. I'll reprint this, because I do want to use this um, piece. But anyway, I did all that. Okay. So you can see I did that with embossing, but, um, when you do the embossing and you can see it here, depending on how much embossing you do, it will seep through to the other side, which is fine. I can just cover that with a piece of paper, right? But if you're not going to do that, or you've printed on the back, like I did here, you can see that it can quickly get, 
kind of oversaturated with the embossing ink. So I tested, where is it? This one, this one and this one. I tested by first putting over some matte gel medium. But because this is inkjet printed, you can see that as I started to pull that up, so my hope was that by doing that, it wouldn't see through to the other side, which that I did accomplish that. It does not see through to the other side. Um, but you can see that it started to smudge the ink from my inkjet printer, which I don't mind at all. I mean, that's fine for me. But this one, I did a little quicker and because I use a, um, where are you? I use one of these silicone uh, brushes. It left like a little, a little mark there. I don't know, it's barely visible. But anyway, if you do it super quick and then dry it off really quick, it tends to um, not run as much like this. This, I brushed it too many times and so the ink started to smear. Um, but it did accomplish what I wanted, which where the um, embossing pen ink did not see through to the other side. So that's an option for you if you're trying to protect the other side. So like with the pockets and that, I don't care because nobody's gonna see the other side, right? So I'm gonna do a bunch of them. But then I got to thinking, well, that's gonna be terrible because this is my cover and I really wanna dress these up, but I don't wanna smear the ink and I don't want it to see through the other side, obviously because I have more stuff there and I was really worried that uh, the ink might also you know, smear this. So I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So what I was doing then was playing with my UV resin. Okay. So I have this UV resin and I have a couple of these little, I'm not going to shine it in the camera, but it's just like a, a UV light, uh, which hardens the resin. I also have like a little lamp that they use for doing nails. So this stuff I was playing with and I did like these guys. I was worried at first that um, it might smear the ink, but I did this one and as you can see, I did it pretty quick. So I put the UV resin on and I kind of spread it out. I use the silicone uh, brushes and then I quickly got on it with the light so that it would harden. Now these harden super quick. So um, it didn't have a lot of time to kind of smudge anything, but it did go through the other side. So I was, I was trying to see if that was gonna be the case because I, again, I was gonna try to do it on here. And then I said, well, that's not gonna work. So I came up with some other solutions. The first one being that um, I'm gonna have these on my inner covers. Now I'm gonna call these my inner covers because I'm going to wrap this whole journal in the end with an outer cover and I have an idea for that I'm not going to disclose it right now um, but I have something fun I think I want to try but in the meantime these inner covers I want to decorate so I put the UV resin on the words so this one says beneath the ocean waves and this one says guardians of the deep and I thought the guardians of the deep could go with this guy back here and beneath the ocean waves could go with uh, Missy over here. Okay, so I did those two with the UV resin. And again, I just put a little line across, I spread it out, we're gonna do one, so I'll show you, but I did that. Then I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> why not, why not use the UV resin by itself and, and harden it and then glue it on? Like this. So I figured, this was some drips I did. I thought that would be fun. I don't know if I'll use this one, but I will use these. And so here's what else I did. I made these water bubbles. And I figured I could just use these and then glue them down. I'm not sure how to attach them yet. I'm gonna experiment and see if I'm gonna use double-sided tape or glue. Um, if anybody knows in the comments if my Fabrifix will, um, will chemically cause a reaction to the uh, UV, let me know. I'm gonna try to look it up, but I might just resort to the tape because I think it will be harder to see. My heat keeps coming on. It is frigid here. It was 40 when I woke up this morning. I don't know what it is now. We've gone to such extremes. Yesterday it was 77 degrees. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna 
So that's what I thought I could use to kind of dress up without worrying about hurting the other pages. So we'll make a couple more of these. Okay. And then I also, with this gold running through a lot of the stuff here, I figured I would try, and where did I put you? Okay, I have this gold watercolor. I have a lot of different metallics in here. This stuff is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. It's very pigmented. Um, I love, love, love this. It is Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors. And this is the box. I got it on Amazon, I think. I might've gotten this in Blick. Actually, I might've gotten this in Blick. I'm not 100% sure. Look for it. Um, it's a F0600. It's fine tech pearlescent colors. Anyway, I have this, you might have this, maybe you have it. But I took them and um, I painted on this seahorse. And now what I wanted to prevent again was it coming through the other side. So I did it almost like a dry brush of the color. And you can see it just kind of gives it enough. So I thought I would do some of that with her hair. And then on some of the ephemera and also on him back here, like maybe on his face here, just to add some, some more pizzazz. <laughs> but I did want to make sure it wasn't going to go through to the other side again. And I can see that if I do a really uh, gentle brush technique and don't get the paper really wet, it'll work really well. I didn't do the best job on Mr. Seahorse, but... Um, yeah, I was just experimenting. Okay, so let's let's do some more. We'll just do a couple. Um, I don't want to bore you, but I do want to show you the process in case you've never seen it before or it's something that's new to you. This would be a good one for um, for the gold, I think. Let's work on this guy, and I think maybe this glaze would be a good one for this. Maybe we could do a little of this also. It's just that I don't like mixing them because then I can't get them back in the container. <laughs> so we might have to do it in steps. All right, I'm gonna use a Ranger embossing pen. So this comes with a clear and a black pen in the pack. Um, I think they also maybe sell them, send that, what? Sell them individually. So I have that. I have this heat tool that I use for embossing. And then I already showed you the Distress Glazes. So these are Ranger also by Tim Holtz, the Distress line. Okay, so I'm just going to, with the darker, I think I'll just, you know, kind of follow this line here. Well, it kind of went down here, so I gotta go down here now. All right, so we'll do all this. And again, like I said, I didn't cover this one with a matte medium because nobody's gonna see the other side. It's a pocket. So we'll do some of that there. We'll come over here and do some of this. <clears throat> and then maybe we'll just run a little line here. And maybe here. Okay, so let's do this one first. I'll cover my pen in a second. I'm always afraid the embossing ink is going to dry too fast on me, <laughs> which it never really has, but I still have this like panic. All right. So there's that. And I don't want to flick it. And I usually have a brush here, but I don't have one right now. That's okay. I'm not worried about these little pieces and I'm not going for perfection, but I do want to get, I want to go back in here with some gold. So you can use one of those, I have it around here somewhere, one of those pads. There's like a, a thing you can put over it to remove the static. But anyway, my embossing is on there. You can see it. And so I'm just gonna, sorry for the noise. I'm gonna heat up my tool. And then off camera, I'm just going to heat the back. Take a little of that noise away from you. And then you, we're going to emboss. I'm 
and watch your fingers with this. I have a um, I have a pair of tweezers here when I have little pieces, but this is fine. These heat guns are super hot. There we go. Okay. Um, you can see like there's some spots in there that didn't quite get it. I'll just go back in there with the other color and then I'll put some clear over the rest of it. But I think it's kind of cool. So let's put this one away. The pen lets you kind of get in there and get a little more precise with what you're doing. This stuff is like glitter. <laughs> if you've never worked with it, it gets everywhere. So you just want to uh, be aware of that. And it's a plastic of some type, I think, um, whatever the makeup is of it. So you want to be careful not to be inhaling it. Just, you know, play safe with your toys. All right, let's do this one next. So I'm going to come back here. I can see kind of where I left some of this clear, uh, missed some of this with my pen. So I'm just going to get that. And then I'm going to kind of go over these other areas let's see what what the difference in the two colors you know with the with the blue behind it the color of the ink you know from this particular print it uh it kind of takes over so let's just see what we get and then we'll fill in it with some clear um, if you're really good, you can do fancy stuff like here, you could probably do a combination of like a white. So in that case, you could probably use something like this frosted crystal. If you wanted to add some depth and dimension to it as well. Um, I think that's more opaque. So, um, I am actually going to grab this for this part. All right, here comes the tool. Okay, I think that came out really nice. I like the two different colors together. I think it really kind of dresses it up. There are some spots in here where I can go back over with some clear if I want to, but it's got uh, that watery look. I really like it just like that. Um, I do think it would be cool if I could do maybe a couple of little dots here in the clear. So let's put this color away and actually up here. And we'll put this color away and you know I just kind of wanted to show this technique I know there's a lot of beginners in here maybe you've never worked with embossing um, mediums or have never embossed uh, and it may seem a little foreign to you so this is more for you guys and just to kind of show you what I'm doing in my journal right but if you know how to you know use all this stuff then you can just wait for um the next video <laughs> but i am going to show some of the uv stuff so that's fun oh and then this one too might look nice on here i don't know maybe we'll save this for sand i think it would look good on sand all right let's get some clear uh here i just want to kind of take it up here a little just to kind of give this a little pop And in here, it'll just make it kind of glow a little. We'll see. I mean, everything to me is like a big experiment. <laughs> I can always print another one if I completely fail, but I, you know, it's like even if I fail, it still looks pretty. So <laughs> I tend to keep it. Okay, you don't want to tap too hard. I just gently tap that, especially when you're doing precise work like cards and you're doing greetings and very fine stamping. But for this, it's not that big a deal. Here comes the tool. All right, there we go. I think it, you know, it just adds a little dimension and some fun stuff. And, uh, yeah, I don't know that I like those like completely, um, I don't know. It just kind of feels like it's here. It's kind of um, 
ja jagged. Which should, maybe I'll use the dauber. I have this uh, embossing dauber. So I use this to re-ink my ink pad, but you can also use it this way. So maybe this will give me a better result. Then I'll get more on here. Did that even put anything? No. Uh, I gotta dab it off first. Yeah, okay. It's doing something. Right, let's see if we can get a more uniformed look. I'm still not completely convinced. Okay, it is. <laughs> I didn't know that it put anything down. It was so light. All right. So this over here I'm going to wipe off because I'm going to have to fold that. Okay, and I don't want it getting in the way of my fold. All right, let's see if we can finish this up. I think it just brings the color forward and it gives it that watery feel. So, done. Let's do... Let's do... Let's do the sea glass. All right, you stay there. And this one has the pearls, so we can just do some accents on here. Um, maybe we'll just do a little of this guy, some of this in here. Maybe this here. Okay, and then we'll do some of these pearls. Water droplets. Okay, I'm gonna use the clear. gonna I'll skip ahead okay so we got a little accent there on the pearls and just you know a little shimmer on the sea glass so that one's done all right uh you get the embossing I can do the rest of the embossing off camera but I kind of wanted to just show you so that's that side of it I will do that throughout the journal on pieces here and there. I don't want to do it everywhere because then it just kind of takes away from the, I don't know, the uniqueness of it. <laughs> Some other things I brought out too are my gelatos. So I thought maybe I could use some of these on some of the gold too. I don't know. We're going to find out through experimenting. Um, for this one, why don't I show you why don't I show you the gold watercolor and um, let me get my, where's my spray bottle? Here you are. The, this color and this rose gold are my two favorites, but um, I'm just going to use the one, this, this gold here. This one's a little brassy for me. <laughs> um, but this one is really, really nice. Okay, so it's very wet. So I kind of just want to get the pigment mixed so that you see how rich that is. It's just like such a lush color. It really has so much pigment, but I don't want it this wet. Um, and I'm probably just going to maybe do a hint down here. Maybe we can... Oh, wow. that dried super fast because it's so wet. <laughs> All right, um, I think I'm just going to stick to in here. And this is a pocket, so 
I'm not really that worried about what's gonna but I do want to make some of this pop out and this is an opaque kind of color so I know I'm covering up some of the actual photo but I don't mind because it's gonna give it that kind of glow Okay, that's that guy. And then I could do the tops with some embossing so that that kind of remains. And then the glow will just be seen at certain angles. This one here, same thing. I got a lot of like gold accents. Now, if you have like um, a gold Sharpie or some kind of gold marker, you could do the the same thing, right? You could kind of go over it with that marker and, and kind of add some accents. Um, very wet. Let's see. A painter? I am not. <laughs> more shimmers down here even though they don't exist right now on the actual picture and the front of her dress maybe or her fin uh, whatever <laughs> maybe the top of her head a little here where it's shining through so there just kind of gives it a little glimmer I like it this stuff I'm telling you it is just amazing and I could go back in and water that down if it's a little too much. All right, we've got her here. Let's see. Um, maybe on the scales here. I'll just add a little here and there. To kind of bring them to life and up here in her little crown. This gold should have gold. And I'm just dabbing. I'm just kind of dappling. And there we go right how cool is that but you could do the same thing like with I, I you know I'm not that familiar with gelatos but because I don't use them all the time but let's see I'm not gonna put it on her but from what I understand uh, is that gonna be a good one maybe um you can wet your brush so let me put it over here and go into the actual gelato now i'm just gonna pick up i think these are like um i have some wax pastels that are water soluble so i use them with mixed media see how and these are a little more transparent so this actually might work good let's see i can add it here this is a gold champagne gelato so we've got some up here this one's a lot more subtle so And see it's very subtle and you can just continue to go over it so you could add more or less um, to kind of get you where you want to go and that's a really nice color and it doesn't lose a lot of that background but you do want to be careful because it is gonna run a little so I'm just gonna come in here now with a little of this gold and maybe dabble because you, if, especially if you're using a um, an inkjet, because it's just gonna make your ink run. So don't go too crazy. <laughs> you might lose your entire image. There. So some ideas for you. 
with that. And then let's do the UV resin so you can kind of get a, a look at that. Let me swipe this off. Totally. Okay, get that away. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys. I got um I got some charms on Amazon. Let me show you these. So this entire box, it's supposed to have 150 pieces, has mermaid stuff. It's got little seashells, which are fun. It's got these mermaid tails. I'll put the, the link to it in the description box below. It will be an affiliate link, um, like that kind of mermaid tail, but it's filled. I, these are the ones I picked out. Look, a little jellyfish. <laughs> it's so cute. And a seahorse. What else is in here? Oh, the little whale. So I figured I'd use a bunch of these charms, but it's got all these pieces that you can see there. They have gold on the other side, but there's gold throughout this journal, so I don't mind them at all. And I figured I have that fabric that I used in the dragon journal that I wanted to make a mermaid journal with, so I thought I could also use these for that. And moving forward, 150 pieces will go a long way. All right, so these are done. Let's do the UV resin just so you can kind of see that. I'm gonna use the other side of this uh, mold. These are silicone molds and I can move this over there. And make some droplets like this, super easy. So this stuff you can also get on Amazon. I'll link it below. I love this stuff. I use it to make um, like numbers. I don't think I have any around here, do I? No, I used, I used to have a bunch. But um, so I have a kit in my shop that is just numbers, like uh, distress numbers. And so I cut them out and then I put this on top of it and use them as charms inside of journals and things like that. So this stuff is super, super cool. I'll give you a link to one of these flashlights. It's just a UV light. They market them for finding urine stains and bed bugs. I don't know. I just use it for this. Um, but I do have one of those lamps. Okay, so I'm just putting little drops and this is self leveling. Um, so you want to make sure the surface you're on is somewhat level. They make little levels. That one I dripped off because I kind of pulled away. You want to just pull up and look at me. I'm making a mess. If you can get it up before anything hits it, you're good. All right. So I want to go kind of straight down and pull it straight up. And then the, you know, what this, because it's stringy. And so the string will drop down somewhat okay that's enough um you can kind of get fancy with it like i said uh showed you with this one so if you wanted to and it dries super fast so let's go It is faster when I just kind of set this under the the one that has the um, is for nails because I can just set a timer and walk away. But these are I don't have to pull out a the big you know the thing and plug it in and find room for it. So this works just as good. And you know I'm just doing these few here. But when you're working with this stuff, you want to be in a well ventilated area. You want to make sure that um, you're you're not you know breathing this stuff in a lot. It can really have um, some effects on your health, and I've seen some pretty scary videos. So you'll see that this is already drying. It's already dry. I'm gonna go over it a little more, and I'll be right back. So they are hardened. Um, sometimes the other side is still a little wet so I just kind of 
flipped them over and did the other side also just a little but and they do get warm so if you're doing this process don't just go grab them um because they it does warm up if you get gel done on your nails you know your nails heat up especially if you've had something removed like acrylics and gel put on top of it. don't do that um it's a little painful but um they're dry yeah he's good now and we just have a little water droplet and super easy uh, I thought it would be a great way to dress up some of these pages and I also did that with these so that's what I'm going to do on my covers so let's let's get her and we can hmm, let me try let me see what double-sided tape looks like I just need a piece of anything to put it on I can reprint so I'm not worried and there is a lot of ephemera in this kit I'm not worried about not having one tag okay Let's see what this does and then I'm gonna put a little glue down this is white glue but it's dry as clear so I just don't know how well this will hold and then I'm gonna do some three-in-one but I don't know if or this is Fabrifix same same stuff I don't know if this will hold long term because I'm not sure if what's in this glue will react with the resin we're about to find out <laughs> um let me first peel this up okay that i think might be my best bet so we're gonna put you down on there that's a good one i like that this one we'll put on And then I'll do you on the white glue, which is my art glitter glue and PVA mix. Okay, and so this one might be better if I push it down further. Yeah, so the tape, I can kind of see the tape under there because I don't know why it's not meeting. Maybe a smaller piece of tape. All are holding perfectly fine. And I don't think anyone would notice. That tape is very obvious, though, if you kind of tilt it. These two are fine. And this one isn't dry. But um, so long as that continues to hold, I think that might be the winner. This one is drying, and it should dry mostly clear. But it, I think it has like just a slight haze at times, so I don't know how that will hold up. The other thing I'm concerned about with the glues is any of the ink running. But I don't think it's going to be a really big deal. All right, so the tape is definitely a no for me. I just don't like the way I can see the edges under it. Um, I think I'm going to go with... The three and one or the fabric fix all right so let's put some on missy here decide where we want them maybe down here i'm gonna put the word on here too maybe this would be working better if i could just open this up instead of having it fall and slide down um, when you're working with this resin, these um, silicone brushes are like ideal. So when I was doing this one, rather than using a bristle brush, because you can just take your light and harden what's on here and it'll peel right off. If you have a bristle brush, it will harden, but it's, it's really hard to get it off those bristles. So I like those silicone brushes. And um, if I think about it, I'll put a link to the set that I ordered in the description box for you guys. Uh, yeah, so she's going to get this one. 
and I just thought a few of these bubbles would look good. So let's put them down as I'm talking. Try to put a thinner coat. I don't know, this may be something you guys want to try, or maybe it's just a little too involved for you. <laughs> I don't know. You decide. I like it. It's nice and quiet now. You know, this might work better if I just put the glue down on the page. I'm so worried about dropping them. I like the dimension it adds too. I'm always saying how this junk journaling keeps your uh, motor skills in order, <laughs> your fine motor skills, and helps you to, you know, kind of be more de have more dexterity. That's what I'm looking for. All right, let's put another one over here. I'll make some smaller ones and add more of those. This glue is stringy too. All right. And if you get bubbles in your, in your resin, which happens, that one has a bubble in it. I don't mind because I'm making water bubbles and droplets. Um, you can just take a heat gun over top of it gently or a blow dryer and get some of the bubbles out. There's actually a lot of people who are like are resin experts <laughs> on YouTube who could probably, let's see, maybe over here, give you some more expert tips. But uh, yeah, I just thought this would be a kind of a cool way to get that water effect. I hope you agree. All right, let's get this down. And then I have to make some smaller bubbles. And the other thing is too, when you're doing like a, a thin sheet like this, like I did this word, it tends to want to curl so I pull it off and kind of bend it a little while it's warm because it, it it takes a minute after you use the UV light um, for it to get really hard Ooh, I guess I didn't put you down yeah we're good um, so you have a little time to kind of work with it if it curls too much on you okay so there's that i will add in a few more bubbles to her but i'm liking it what do you guys think let me know in the comments below what you're thinking of these kind of ways of enhancing your journal and if you have any ideas of your own or some tips for any of the items that i'm using definitely share them with everybody and we can all benefit from each other's experience that's the video for now i'm going to continue to do some embossing and play with the resin and then um in the next video we'll you know start to put some pockets in and things like that but i know you guys kind of go on your own so have at it and um have fun and uh i'll see you in the next video have a great rest of your day or night bye Thank you.